Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to have a weird flex of sorts. What we're looking at is Flex, F-L-E-C-S. This is the Fast Lightweight Entity Component System. I actually covered this back in 2019, so if you're around since then, well, first off, thank you. But second, there has been a heck of a lot of changes since then. In fact, Flex 3.2 was just released uh, a few days back. We're not going to really focus much on that particular release. I'm going to assume you've probably never been exposed to Flex before, and I'm going to um, more or less explain why you want to check this one. Out. First off, it is free and it is open source, which is very nice. It is based on C99 as the API. This means you can use it with everything. You could do language bindings for just about anything. We'll see some language bindings in just a minute. You could probably run Flex on your toaster. Now, what this is not, this is not a game engine. This is a way to um, manage the entities in your game or your other application. This doesn't just have to be used for games. Uh, if you've heard of the Unity data-oriented technology stack, a big part of that is a move to ECS. ECS is, says it all in the name, Entity Component System. This is basically all of the stuff in your game are made up of entities. Those entities contain components. Those components are operated on by systems. It's a way of making your logic so you decouple the data from the logic. It also makes it so it runs very, very, very well on today's hardware where we're getting more and more speed by adding more and more cores. You split your data up and you remove these dependencies between the bits of data. You can run them in parallel, which makes things fast. So think of this as a way to structure the data in your game. You can implement Flex into the Godot game engine, the Unity game engine, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because they're doing it with dots or the Unreal Engine, which also there is a minimum viable template. I'll show you that in just a bit. So this is not a game engine. This is a way of structuring data within your own game engine or application. Um, again, it is fully open source. It supports entity relationships, hierarchies, prefabs. It can run in the browser without modification using mscripting. Um, it's, yeah, a lot of things. Again, run across multiple cores. There's a fast lockless scheduler to handle that. Uh, it compiles on eight different compilers, uh, unit annotations for components, powerful querying language. So when you actually want to look for data in your game world, the tools are built in. And then one of the coolest things, we'll see this in just a minute as well, there's a web-based UI for monitoring things. There's also statistics add-on for profiling how your performance is going. There's also really good documentation, as you can see right here. So all of the classes, all of the stuff here, it is all documented here. Uh, all of the bits and pieces here. So you want to learn how the systems aspect work. Come in here. You can see code examples of using systems. Very cool system on the whole. Entity component systems are very popular way of storing data. And again, if you want to implement this into another game engine, that is an option. So Flex is an open source project. It is available. Uh, it's again, C99 API. So you should be able to implement it into just about anything. Also C++ 11 uh, code base. If you look at the code, it's Itself. It's, uh, I think, about 90-10. Yeah, so 89.3 versus 10.6 versus the mythical 0.1 of, I don't know what this is. Um, it's under the MIT license, which is a very liberal license. It has been around for quite a while. Uh, but as you can see, there was a new update just a couple of days back. It is constantly being updated. Uh, and the MIT license will allow you to quite a bit with it. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it's available at www.flex.dev. Um, now, I mentioned earlier on, there are some tools that are built into it. There's a set of samples you can come up and learn from. So for example, there is the city example, it kind of just gives you a, a simple city that you can navigate through. You can actually run these as a uh, web assembly. Uh, all the source code for these demos is available. So this entire world is structured in um, made up of entities and components. And then uh, I don't know that there's a lot of systems happening because there's not a lot of um, game logic or actions in here. There's nothing running around in the world, for example. But this is a, a, a Give an example of how Flex works. Full source code are available, which is quite cool. And there is another example in here of tower defense. So we want to come in here, see how actually you would use Flex. Here is a C++ example of uh, a game created using an entity component system. Very straightforward code to understand. It, it's Once you get your head around organizing your game world using entities and components, uh, it will come to you rather quickly. Now, cool thing here is also some of the tooling that is built into Flex. So let's load that one back up. So this is another example. You see uh, tower defense all running automated. So here you can see uh, so we do have some systems. So we have like the, the turrets. They're being controlled. They're shooting. Everything in this game world is ultimately an entity and so on. But one of the 
really cool superpowers with flex is this guy right here. So you can open up the Explorer. So in your own game, you can build in this uh, Explorer layer there that allows you to actually visualize and understand all the entities that make up your world. So you see here, we have all of the enemies in the world, which I believe would be this train that's running through. So one of those, I can actually drill down into it. We pick one of those entities and you can actually see, oh, it's dead. I think it just got killed. So now it's not found. So you can see uh, where it is, all of the various different. So this is an entity. An entity ultimately has an ID at the top, but it's made up of a bunch of components. So there's a graphics component. Okay, now it just died. I really should pause this before going through. But anyways, you can see what I'm dealing with. So you got a physics component on here. You've got a transform component, graphics component, and so on. So that is how you would ultimately structure. You've got the entity, which in a lot of ways you can think of as just a giant array with a bunch of IDs in it. And then you've got all of these various different things in here. So for example, if I wanted to come through here and mess with uh, my game world, I can come and drill into any of the details here. So let's go over something that, unlike the enemy, isn't going to die quite as much. So we'll go into a turret. Here you can see all of the turrets that populate our game world. And you can see things like, where are they targeting? What What is the actual target for it? So you can drill in and actually see all of the entities in your world, the components that they make up, what they are currently doing, and so on. Very useful tool to have built in. Again, you can see how this guy is made up of various different components. So this is a super common one, for example. A transform component, which is just a 3D position and a transform in space, is part of this entity. So that is, again, how you would organize things. The entity basically being the ID in the world, the component being all of the things that it has or does, and then the systems being like the verbs, the thing that actually the logic or the code logic behind the scenes. You'll have to go into the code to actually see those in action, but you can actually jump in here and see all of it. In fact, you can do some pretty drastic stuff. So for example, if I want to get rid of something, let's just get rid of all the turrets. So again, a turret is just another entity, but an entity of collection of other entities. So I can come up here and I can just basically outright delete it. There, no turrets in our world at all. This tool itself is very, very, very cool. One of the coolest things about Flex itself and you can build this into your own game which is quite nice so here again is the flex 3.2 release notes i don't getting into a ton of details about uh, flex 3.2 itself they added a number of features in here uh, so they did things like relationship flattening a uh, new graph query engine Again, querying is a big part of this basic, think of it as a database. If you were using like a SQL database for representing your game, the query engine would be like the SQL language itself for querying that world. Uh, things like assemblies, uh, world serialization, which again is important. So if you want to actually save your game state, for example, which is another thing that an anti-component system makes relatively easy to do. You can just stream out the state of what your game is currently doing. And presto, you have a safe game system. So there are a lot of upsides to ECS in general. Um, so there's a, a lot of updates in 3.2. Again, I'm going to, in this video, assume that you've never seen Flex before. Uh, but if you're interested, I will link to this article as well. So if you want to see specifically what is new in Flex, 3.2. Now, I did mention earlier on, uh, this is C99 based, so making language bindings is pretty trivial. But the nice thing is, a lot of people have already done it for you. So if you want to use Flex in C Sharp, there are two sets of bindings available there. Two sets of bindings for Rust language. Uh, Zig language has three sets of bindings, and there are two for Lua, one for Lua and one for Lua JIT, um, which is quite nice. So basically, uh, C++ and C, obviously, you don't need. So C Sharp, Rust, Zig, and Lua are all covered with bindings at this point in time. Um, I also mentioned earlier on that there is a demo of implementing Flex inside of the Unreal game engine. So if you're using Unreal and you'd rather organize your game logic in a different way. Now, when you're dealing with an existing game engine and you're trying to shoehorn a data management system on top, you're always going to have these little system fights. But this will actually show you uh, how to implement it inside of Unreal Engine 5.1. Uh, and you still get the Flex Explorer support in there, which is quite nice. And there is mapping between C++ Entity and Blueprint Communications in this example. So this is uh, one example of how you can run Flex inside of uh, the Unreal Engine, uh, which doesn't actually have one built in. I do think they're working on something uh, similar to this. I forget the exact naming of it, but there is something going on uh, at Unreal to add this kind of oh, mass. <laughs> it's literally in the next sentence. They are working on mass, which is an entity component system for the um, Unreal game engine. But as you can see here, still very experimental and not useful right now. So Flex is available this way. It's been used in other products as well, such as the Forge uh, and a couple other games. I think they were listed at the bottom of the release notes. So if we come down here, you'll see uh, some of the example. Uh, no, it was somewhere else. Was it on the main page? There is a list somewhere of 
uh, some of the games. Yeah, so here you can see some projects that are using Flex. And some of these are actually going to be open source available as well. So you can actually see how they implemented Flex. So the Equilibrium Engine and the Forge, uh, which I think I covered this one in a previous video. I don't know that I've covered this one. They both implement Flex. And then there are a number of games on here that you could check out. So if you want to see, this one does appear to be an open source project. So if you want to get in and see how an actual game uses Flex, you can jump in here, and as you see, everything is made up of components. This is using the Zig programming language, it would appear. So yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, is Flex, the fast, lightweight entity component system. Uh, 3.2 just released. One of those things, if you're looking for a way to structure the data in your game world so it scales well and gives, gives you good performance and it's queryable and has relationships, etc., an entity component system is definitely worth checking out. And Flex, free and open source, definitely worth checking out as well. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.